well, this farm is just, just inside the Dartmoor National Park, on, on the edge of Dartmoor, in the Teen Valley, near the parish of Cristo. We've, we've actually got uh, four different breeds of sheep. Uh, we've got uh, Pedigree Suffolks and Texels. We've got uh, a small flock of, of purebred Frieslands, which we sell females into milking flocks. And we've got some of the, the sheep you can see behind us here. We've got about 700 of them now, which are wool shedding, naturally wool shedding sheep. So the ultimate easy care sheep. What you're looking at here is actually a composite breed. We've, we've got six different wool shedding breeds in it and a couple of, of uh, native um, normal uh, wool sheep, um, clean and, and, a, and a bit of mule in there as well. Um, we're looking to improve, to have a, a sheep that's very easy to look after, very easy to manage, but still be productive. Um, it's all very well having a sheep that's easy to look after if it doesn't produce anything, but that ain't going to earn you anything. So these, these have got to tick both boxes. Have you ever fed in troughs? Uh, don't even think about it. Uh, um, Recipe for disaster, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, just don't go there. Don't right. go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it's un, it's unhygienic. It's hard work. It makes a mess in the field. Um, and my understanding is it's one of the best ways of getting abortion. You know, with with bird shit on on the troughs, picking up the remains of the food, and you're you're bringing abortion. Up. Right. So, if there was ever a bit of advice I would give to anybody, it's don't feed in troughs. And to start off with, years ago, it was bags out of the back of the pickup, and you'd tramp across the field and try and find a clean, clean place in the field to feed. Then, when we got the quad bike, sort of 15, yeah, probably 15 years ago, we started just piling bags of food on the quad bike and riding out, and you take, you take enough to feed three or four hundred ewes in a go and you take it out and then you know, drop whatever food you had to. And the beauty of that, of course, is you get to a clean place in the field, but it's hard work. If you've got a mob of 200 ewes, it's, it's very hard work. Um, whereas now you drive out with a snacker, they get used to parting. It's like Moses parting the sea of sheep when you get out into the field. And you know they get used to the fact the food is coming out the back end, not the front end of the quad bike. Um, and as soon as you get out just in front of them, you just keep going. And um, yeah, it's just made my life so much easier. Last autumn, we were feeding every sheep on the farm from about the middle of September till the beginning of December because we'd had such a, a dreadful late summer that, that virtually every sheep on the farm was in poor condition. And we just made the decision that we would pre, pre tup feed or pre and during tupping feed. Mm -hmm. we're, we're tupping now, um, we are now in the middle of November. Um, so the, the rams have been out for a couple of weeks now and this time last year we were feeding every sheep on the farm um, for, a, for about close to three months. Virtually all of the feeding we do would be using the multi-feeder. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we do a small amount of feeding without the multi-feeder but it would be just odd groups in odd places at odd times of the year. But as soon as we're into pre-lambing feeding, which is basically what we do, then that's when we're using the, the, the multi-feeder. They need to be set up. Once you're comfortable that it works on your farm, then, then you, you run with it. Yeah. That was the I, I'm not sure you need to have it adjustable for every day. Hmm. Uh, I mean, we've, we adjusted and calibrated the, 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 the width of the drop. And so now we are dropping a, just a fraction short of a kilo a drop. So it's very easy when you're out in the field to, to, to know how much you're feeding. And we're, we're calling it a kilo, a kilo a drop. Right. So that, that's enough for three to four sheep to feed around. Because I don't think it's worth going out and feeding less than 250 grams a day. I think you do more damage than good, you know, with the fighting and, and the anticipation and the stress on the sheep. Um, and you certainly don't want to be feeding more than 400 grams in a feed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between 250 and 400. So I've, I've got my snacker now set for a kilo a drop, which means you know you, you know how many drops you're doing for the for the group, and, and off you go. I mean, on the ground that we've got, um, we there's, there is there is one or two fields, and we tend to ad adapt the route so we're going down over those fields on the way home, um, just because you you have to you have to make sure that you can get up over. And it's not the power of the quad; it's it's just it's just literally the grip on the quad isn't enough to to get up over some of the fields. So you just adapt the feeding route to make sure that when you you have to go over a steep field, you're going down over it, and it's on the way home with, with a nearly empty feeder. That we would, we would break our necks 
to prevent stressing the ewes at, at a critical time of the year. But this has just made my life easier because we now go out, we feed the ewes with the minimum, of, absolute minimum of stress, but also it's much physically much easier for me. Mm. So there's, there's been a benefit in stress levels, but it's been probably I've benefited more than the sheep. But the sheep now are being fed you know, with, with minimum stress, which I hope I was doing before as well. I mean, with, with, with the, uh, the, the counter here, I mean, you go out, you've got 100 ewes and you say, right, these ewes are getting 300 grams a day. So that's 30 kilos. You, you set, set the thing going, and when it gets to 30, you switch off and drive to the next field. I mean, it just couldn't be simpler. You're on a field called Sunnyside, which, as you can see this morning, it is sunny. Uh -huh. But the farm basically is 1,100 acres and we own about 1,350 sheep, uh, Cheviot, North Country Cheviot ewes. Mm -hmm. And finding, feeding them in the winter is a bit of a problem if you were toughs. You imagine feeding at toughs with that quantity because they're running very big numbers. In this lot here, there's about 500 sheep in this lot, so you would need a lot of toughs and you would never get them all evenly fed. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of the multi-feeder is you can feed them over a, a fair wide area and there's no bumping and barging at toughs and you can pick a clean spot every morning. And this field's 250 acres, so if they're not all together, at least you can go and get to the ones that are a little bit slower at coming or have been away, because some of them lie at the bottom of the field. Well, it, it, it's stopping at about two pound a drop on this, on this, uh, on the, on this multi-feeder here. Yeah. And we find within a pound or two, the average is out very evenly. Um, and I can carry about 1,200 pound on this multi-feeder. And it's built the last. We've had this one, I think, 10 years. And I don't think we've ever had anything done to it other than the, a little sleeve on the on the drawbar, which on the ground that we feed on, it's all rig and foreign. It's very undulating. So there's a lot of pressure on the on the multi feeder. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've ever had a crack on this one. It was, it was made specially for the job here. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change this for anything. Would you not? No. So it's logic. To feed with logic. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the most western tip of Wales. Um, it's so far west that Ireland is a lot closer than, than Cardiff. Dublin is closer than Cardiff. Uh, We're 53 miles from uh, Ireland and uh, it's so uh, exposed there's not a single tree in the farm. Plenty of gorse, plenty of cliff, not a single tree. But uh, having said that, it's a good grass growing area. Very, very mild. It'll travel very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, medium loam, uh, but uh, uh, soil, but it's um, quite shallow, uh, but very free draining. Right. Yeah. We're we're in an SSSI site of special scientific interest um, because of the uh, geography of the of the farm, and the historical importance of the farm. We're organic. Uh, we're in Tirgoval the Welsh version of uh, English stewardship. Um, we're a national park, a national park. So all these um, environmental issues are important. Um, and the logic feeder manages me, it helps me to um, to comply with all restrictions. Uh, 900 ewes, mm -hmm. um, based on a foundation flock of uh, 100 Welsh ewes, <coughs> Welsh mountain ewes, then uh, uh, crossed with the Blueface Leicester to produce Welsh mules, and then their further cost was a texel. So we end up with um, about half my ewes, 40% of my ewes would, would be texel cost mule, and 40% would be uh, Welsh cost uh, uh, mule. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the terminal sires are Charley, Suffolk and Texel. I, I try, try and run a simple system, and uh, it, it takes the boxes. It, it does a job. Um, doesn't poach the ground, very important for cost compliance these days. Um, I can feed the sheep wherever I want, not constrained to the muddy gateway, anywhere in the field. Um, wherever the wind is or shelter is on that given day, I can put the sheep in the shelter and they stay in the shelter mm -hmm. after being fed. That's good. And, and lot, the sheep are a lot more contented, a lot less stress feeding with, with um, a snacker than there is with um, troughs. You've got a competition and any sheep which is stressed equals 
problems down the line. Mm -hmm. So it keeps so, the stress out. Of yeah, so. and not only dead lambs you're talking about, or bad presentations, lambs going backwards, twisted lambs, mm -hmm. because of sheep being knocked about at the tough situation. They're all, it's not natural, sheep like, sheep's worst enemy is another sheep. Mm -hmm. Spread them up with a quad, and of course I can vary the, uh, the distance between drops by my power speed. Very simple. Very simple indeed. Yeah. I'm getting a bit older, I'm carrying bags and slippery wet wet weather. Not very nice with a hundred years knocking knocking you over. Um, also the poaching in gateways or wherever you, um, wherever you were feeding them. With this, wherever the wind is, wherever the rain is, you can adjust uh, accordingly and feed them. There's always, even on this exposed site, always there's shelter or by some stone wall or by some patch of gorse. It's always shelter. Mm -hmm. Just find it. So you just find a, a suitable place on the day? It'll, it'll vary daily, yeah. very daily. They get, used to the, they get used to the noise of the quad and, and, and the revs. As soon as I finish feeding, I change gear, higher rev and the, sh the sheep stop following me. They mm -hmm. know that's it. And I can, I can happily go to the next gate without the sheep of two fields meeting in the gate. Um, but just by my revs. It's, it's good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the sheep are fast learners, mm -hmm. very fast learners. Obviously, I don't feed them up to one gate, open another gate and sheep it. You know, I take them away from a gate. Yeah, yeah. That's obvious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The twins up to a pound a day, which is half a kilo a day, yeah. basically. Uh, only triplets would I feed more to. Uh, triplets may, may be up to a kilo. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can feed triplets too much. And how, I mean, you've got a, the control box and the counter on there. Yeah. Uh, how useful is that when you... Very, very useful. I can put enough in, uh, in this and carry a bit on the side of the quad. I, I can put enough in for 440, 450 use, one go, uh, which is most of the, of the, the twin bearing use on the farm. Uh, one fill up from the barn, and out we come. I have 80 sheep in, in one field. We set the, uh, the counter, uh, set the rations as exactly what each uh, sheep needs, mm -hmm. let's say half a kilo, and we can set it at that, and when, mm -hmm. if there's 80 sheep in one field, when the count is an 80, they're fed, switch off, next field. I can do 440 sheep, 450 sheep in 25 minutes, in four different fields. All I, in, in my, um, in my quad bike, right? It's only me working, lambing time, just to see other lads working, right? In here, I'm gonna put a map of the farm, and I'll write on a map, 80 ewes in this field, 70 there. And they know, I can send one feed, but how many in each field? I say, well, okay, it's on there, there. 80 first field, 70 that field, 60 that field. <laughs> That's it. So I've started. <laughs> and you don't end up running 20, 20 sh sh sheep short. Yeah. As long as you know how much stuff you're putting in. And that's not difficult, you weigh it first day. Yeah. You know, I know my, my, my bags weigh 30 kilo, my plastic bag full, within a kilo. Pretty right. close enough. Yeah. Yeah. I know that if I, you know, you just clip it in. But if, if I was doing it by hopper, you, you make a little mark with chalk mark inside, you, you know what level you are. Yeah, absolutely. It's not rocket science. A lot of people are surprised I feed whole grain. Barley and oats and that's it. Mm -hmm. And maybe something like a coarse mix, just to give it a bit of taste. It yeah. Lasts, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's difficult to get from um, an organic, organic situation. I was like, I get some small nuts. And many people think you could have, you could have buy proper sheep food for it. You haven't. No. Oats and barley work fine. Mm -hmm. They find it. And the sheep do find it. Um, I had read about them, I think, in the Farmers Weekly. Mm -hmm. um, Lodge got a good name. And um, nothing's gone wrong with them. It's, it's a simple machine. But, uh, you know, it's not plasticky. It's solid. It's galvanised. You need galvanised in, in, in my climate. Mm -hmm. It's so salty. Yeah. Um, it's so simple. And uh, you can move it by hand. It's, it ticks all the boxes.